there's nothing like your first lesson. There is nothing like your first lesson. It's one of the most exhilarating feelings you'll ever have in your life. So what is flying all about? It's about art and science, imagination and invention. It's about challenge and adventure, determination and skill, exploration and discovery. Flying is about all these things and more. The flying experience is as unique as the many individuals who take up the challenge to pursue the dream of flight. You may be thinking about learning to fly for one or more of these reasons, or you may have an entirely different motivation. Whatever the reason, if you yearn to spread your wings and expand your horizons, this is your chance. You can learn to fly. Where do you begin? As you begin your training, one of the first things you will become familiar with are the components of the airplane and how to use the different controls to make the airplane respond. When you sit in the cockpit of an airplane, you're actually sitting within the framework of the airplane. This framework is called the fuselage and is the attachment point for the other major components of the airplane. It also contains the passenger seating and baggage areas, as well as the cockpit. Within the cockpit are the flight controls and the instrument panel. Located on the panel are the flight instruments and engine gauges. The flight instruments are helpful for verifying your direction of flight, determining your airspeed, and indicating whether or not you're flying level, climbing, descending, making a turn, and your rate and coordination of turn. They also can show how fast you are climbing or descending, and your altitude. The engine gauges are important for monitoring engine performance. On most single engine airplanes, the engine is mounted in the front of the fuselage. Aircraft engines are covered with a cowling, which streamlines the flow of air over the engine and directs the air around the cylinders for even cooling of the engine components. You control engine power by using a throttle located in the cockpit. The engine provides power to turn the propeller. In small airplanes, the engine and the propeller make up the power plant which produces the force necessary to move the airplane through the air. This force is called thrust. The wings, working in conjunction with the power plant, not only produce the force called lift, which keeps the airplane in the air, but also contain the control surfaces which allow you to bank the airplane. These control surfaces are called ailerons and are located outboard on the trailing edge of the wings. When you rotate the control wheel to the right, the left aileron deflects downward, and the right aileron deflects upward. This moves the right wing down and the left wing up. The result is a bank to the right. How this is accomplished will be discussed in a later section. Attached to the aft end of the fuselage is the empennage, which contains the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. In addition to providing stability, the horizontal stabilizer contains the elevator. As the name suggests, the elevator controls the nose up or down movement of the airplane. This is called pitch attitude. 
The elevator is controlled by the forward and aft movement of the control wheel. When you apply aft pressure on the control wheel, the trailing edge of the elevator deflects upward, producing a downforce on the tail of the airplane. This in turn causes the nose of the airplane to pitch up. Forward pressure on the control wheel has the opposite effect. The trailing edge of the elevator is deflected downward, which pushes the tail up, causing the nose to pitch down. The rudder is the movable surface attached to the vertical stabilizer. It is controlled through the use of pedals located on the floor of the cockpit. Applying rudder pressure swings the nose of the aircraft left or right in a yawing motion. Your speed during flight varies according to what you wish to accomplish. For example, during an approach to a landing, it is better to fly at a slower airspeed. The use of flaps located inboard on the trailing edge of the wings helps you maintain this airspeed during the descent. Flaps are retracted or extended by a switch mounted on the instrument panel. Since there are times when using all of the flaps would be too much, most general aviation airplanes have three or four flap settings. All airplanes are equipped with some form of landing gear. The most common type found on training airplanes is the tricycle gear, with two main wheels and a steerable nose wheel. Steering is accomplished by moving the rudder pedals in the direction of the desired turn. Other aircraft may be equipped with two main wheels forward and a tail wheel. This type of aircraft has conventional gear. It is often referred to as a tail dragger. Seaplanes may use a hull-type fuselage or be equipped with floats for water operations. Higher performance aircraft have retractable gear, which improves their performance by streamlining the air flowing around the aircraft. No matter what type of gear is used, they all must be capable of absorbing the loads imposed by repeated landings and by taxiing over uneven surfaces. Brakes are also an integral part of the landing gear. They are activated by pressing individual toe brakes located on the top portion of the rudder pedals. Each brake can be operated independently of the other to reduce the turning radius during ground operations. However, you should avoid using the brakes for primary directional control because most of your turning can be achieved with the nose wheel steering alone. The parking brake can then be set by engaging the hand lever in the cockpit. What you have just viewed in this section is a brief overview of the airplane and some of its components. Your textbook goes into greater detail on these subjects and covers additional items which were not covered in the video.